Hello, hello, I'm Breton, one of our MCAT tutors here at Inspira Advantage, where we help students get into med school and other professional programs. Today, we're going to talk about the important things you need to know about the electron transport chain for the MCAT. It's going to be a scary topic on its surface, but after watching this video, you should feel a lot more comfortable in being able to answer the questions the MCAT's going to throw at you. The main purpose of the electron transport chain is to make ATP. The way it does this is told through the name, electron transport. From a high level view, electrons are passed through the chain through a series of redox reactions to pump protons into the intermembrane space. These power ATP synthase, which creates ATP. Now let's dig into the specifics. Electrons can enter the electron transport complex through two places, complex one and complex two. NADH produced inside the mitochondria from the citric acid cycle or beta oxidation are going to get oxidized at complex one. So let's show that here by zooming in. I have NADH coming in, NAD plus coming out. Then if we see it has donated an electron. So electron is now a part of the electron transport chain. Okay, but there's another place we can also enter the electron transport chain and you might see it from this diagram. NADH produced from outside the mitochondria, like in glycolysis, or FADH produced anywhere, are going to enter the electron transport chain through complex two. So NADH from glycolysis is going to travel out from the cytoplasm, whereas FADH is going to come from inside the mitochondria. And this is important because it kind of tells us how much ATP it's going to be producing. The NADH coming from glycolysis is only going to be worth two ATP in the end, which is the exact same amount FADH is worth compared to the NADH from inside the mitochondria, which is worth three ATP. Okay, so now let's trace the path these electrons take through the ETC. And we want to take track of how many hydrogens they're pumping into the intermembrane space. So starting at complex one, where NADH from inside the mitochondria goes. So this pumps out, as we see here, two hydrogens. These electrons are going to bypass complex two. They do not travel into complex two, into an enzyme called coenzyme Q. This is where electrons from complex two are also going to go into. So both complex one and complex two directly feed into the enzyme CoQ. CoQ is then going to shuttle these electrons to complex three. Complex three is going to be pumping out two hydrogens. And from complex three, this little enzyme called cytochrome C is then going to grab the electrons from complex three and bring them over to complex four. Complex four is then going to take these electrons and bind them to oxygen in a half reaction. So if you think if we take two electrons and bind them to half a mole of oxygen, we're going to get two water molecules. The final acceptor of the electron transport chain is oxygen. The MCAT loves asking you this question. Now let's recap where all of these hydrogens are coming from. We have hydrogens coming out of complex one. We have two coming out of complex one, two coming out of complex three, and two coming out of complex four. Now it's these hydrogens that actually power ATP synthesis. So if we look here, I've drawn in a higher concentration of hydrogen compared to the inside, where we have a lower concentration of hydrogen. Now, because there's this higher concentration of hydrogen, the hydrogen wants to just naturally diffuse across this membrane, but it can't because there's a membrane. It'll just bounce off. So it's trying to find a hole. You know, no hole there, no hole there. This is where ATP synthase, or complex five, comes in. It does accept hydrogens. Hydrogens can pass right on through and they spin a turbine to produce ATP from ADP and in inorganic phosphate. So how much energy is being made? Well, again, I want to recap that we are making three ATP for every NADH that enters through the first complex. And this is going to be NADH made inside the mitochondria. So this is from the citric acid cycle or beta oxidation primarily. Any NADH coming from glycolysis in the cytoplasm is going to enter through complex two. And anything passing through complex two will only produce two ATP. So FADH also enters at complex two, therefore it's also going to produce two ATP. All right, so now that we've gone over that, I want to challenge you here. How much ATP will the oxidative metabolism of one glucose molecule produce. 
So let's look at the substrate level first. So this just means literally making the ATP, like straight up, we're making ATP from ADP. And in this case, we're gonna have a total net of four ATP. We're gonna have two at the first part of glycolysis, and then we're gonna have another two come out of the citric acid cycle. Now for NADH, that's worth three ATP. Well, this is gonna be any NADH from inside the mitochondria. And this is gonna work out to being eight NADH. Now, how much NADH are we gonna make from outside the mitochondria? Again, we wanna be thinking glycolysis. What's happening with how many NADH are we making while doing glycolysis in the cytoplasm? We're gonna make two NADH. How about FADH2? Well, FADH2, we don't care about where it comes from. Um, it's all gonna be in a citric acid cycle and we are gonna make another two FADH2 here. So if we do this math, eight times three, we get 24. Two times two is four, and two times two is four. This is gonna give us a net total of 36 ATP. Now you know all of the high yield electron transport chain information you need to know to do well on the MCAT. Thank you so much for watching our video on the electron transport chain, and I will see you next time.